Hey guys, Jeff with Stone Glacier here and do a quick pack dump for you today. Got a 10 day archery backpack mule deer hunt coming up. Early season, August, hot weather hunt. So I wanna go through our gear and kind of show you a rundown of, of what I'll be bringing with me. Um, over here I got the stuff I'll be wearing uh, most of the time, most of the hunt and on the hike in. So uh, a pair of crispy Brickstall boots. Got a new prototype bino harness and range finder. Um, of ours, prototype merino wool of ours that we're working on, some lightweight gloves, have on pants, and one trekking pole. Um, so early season, you know, going in, not wearing a whole lot of stuff, pretty light. Most everything's gonna be in my backpack. Uh, outside of that, you can see I have a Sky Archer 6400 on an X curve frame here with a large belt. Um, I'm about a 35, 36 inch waist, kind of right on that cusp of a medium and large belt. Um, but I find a large is more comfortable for me. Um, works for more, uh, more broad range of hunts, especially when you get a later season with more layers on. Uh, I got a few accessories on it, but not a whole lot. I have a large accessory pocket on one side and then a regular accessory pocket on the other. Um, keep, some, let's see what we got. keep some stuff in there that I just want quick access to without digging in my pack. So in this one, I have my inReach. Um, that way I don't have to dig in my pack when we sit down, we're glassing, and I want to check in with the family. I also usually keep my cell phone with my phone scope in there as well. That big accessory pocket is handy and that it could fit larger items like this. Uh, on the other side, uh, I just have my GPS in there. I don't use this very frequently, but if you want to mark a waypoint on your hunt, it's nice to have it convenient and accessible so you don't have to go digging around in your pack. Uh, on the front, you know, I have my bow strapped on. I'll carry my bow a lot on this type of a hunt, but not on long hikes in the early mornings or the pack in. I like to strap it on so I have my hands free. You could use a trekking pole or just don't have to worry about that. Um, all of our packs come with uh, long enough compression straps in the front to easily strap a bow on. You don't really need a bow holder or any kind of specific um, setup for that if you just are strategic about where you place your straps. So. You know, I got one going right over my grip and one a little bit lower, so it's on there nice and secure. Pop that off so we can get on the inside here and kind of show you what we're working with. Um, so again, Sky Archer, the couple of unique things that I do on the Sky Archer, I have switched out the Sky Lid for a Hydro Lid. Um, I don't always run a hydro lid, but on backpacking trips like this one, I really prefer uh, to keep my water up here uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, it doesn't squish your bladder on, with all your gear on the inside of the pack if you were to hang it in a traditional spot in the back. Also, uh, it makes it super convenient to just top your water off. Um, some of these hunts, there's, you know, water's few and far between, or you just always want to make sure you have the maximum amount of water because you might not be camping by water. Um, so having it in the top, I also keep my filter up here, you'll see. So I got a bladder and a filter will fit in here. Um, that's just a quick, simple, small pump filter. And then the bladder. Um, it makes it really easy if we come across a spring or something to just pop it off, fill up top off the water bladder and keep on moving. Um, so that's kind of a nice feature for, for backpack hunts. On day hunts and more traditional style hunts, I still will run my bladder in the traditional spot in the back of the bag. Um, but but this is a good setup. So then uh, kind of going through the top here. Um, so the Sky Archer is nice that it has traditional top loader access, but it also has the side access. Throughout the day, as I'm pulling my spotting scope out or getting to things I need quick access, I go through the side access here. But when we're setting up camp or, or for any other reason, I'll go through the top just for uh, convenience of of a quick dump of getting everything out. Uh, so at the top, I also bring, in addition to a Camelback bladder, I also bring a Nalgene. Uh, it's kind of nice to have for mixing powder drinks, if you bring types, Gatorades, energy drinks, that type of stuff. So that's pretty convenient. I'll start hiking with that full of water in addition to the three liters I have, just so I have the maximum amount of water. Um, and then I like to run, and this is personal preference, but I kind of like to run our camp and swing out pockets just loose in the bag. So you'll see as we go through, I'll have a handful of them and I, I strategically kind of pack them 
you know, the more accessible ones I need in a, in a more accessible spot. But for the most part, they help me kind of keep things compartmentalized and I just toss them in there. We do have attachment points in our bags for all these. Um, sometimes I will attach them, but on hunts like this, uh, I just prefer to toss them in so they're easy to come in and out. I also like to kind of write on them um, what they are. Makes it easy if I'm just looking for one, I know I got the right one. I don't have to unzip it and see. Also, if you're telling your buddy, hey, toss me, you know, whatever, the one with my Havilon in it, he could quickly, easily tell which one he needs to grab for you. So this one that's at the top, I like to keep pretty close is toiletries, um, toilet paper, wipes, uh, toothbrush. That's stuff that I'm using every day. Um, so I keep that relatively close to the top. And this is a camp pocket size, uh, fits it pretty well. Uh, this one, I kind of just floats in my bag. I, I don't use this one frequently and I hope not to, but this is my survival stuff. So it's got a small backpack and first aid kit in there. It's got a lighter in there, um, some moleskin, I've got blisters, some tenacious tape if you have a gear or tent failure. It's kind of got all that random survival stuff. I think I got a fixed blade knife in there, some paracord. So stuff that you want to bring with you and, and you need to have, but hopefully you're not not even going to get to it ever on a hunt. Um, and this is a swing out size pocket, works pretty well for it. And then I kind of stuff, so some of my layers, extra layers, rain gear and stuff, you'll see some of them I'll roll up so they're nice and organized, but a lot of them I'll just leave stuffed in there because it helps pack the pack a little bit fuller. If you have a whole bunch of fixed size items in your pack, and this is just personal preference for me, it makes it kind of clunky, the bow doesn't strap to the front. so. I stuff in some stuff. So here would be my most frequently used layer. This is our Helio hoodie. Um, so that I kind of leave on the top because that would be mild conditions. The one I'm gonna grab first if it starts to get colder. <clears throat> and then the second one is an M5 jacket. This is our rain gear series. So I want this accessible because uh, thunderstorms can roll in quickly and if it starts dumping rain, you want to be able to grab that relatively quickly. You'll see I have the pants down lower. Um, this type of hunt where I know it's going to be pretty moderate conditions, it's not going to be super wet. We may get an occasional thunderstorm. I just don't plan on having to get to the pants as frequently. So um, those are rolled up in a little bit nicer spot down lower or as you'll see, but the rain jacket is left on the top, pretty accessible. And then the next one that's kind of stuffed in here is uh, a Grumman jacket. This piece is um, one of my favorite pieces we make. It's so lightweight and so packable that even on a hunt like this, that's early season and be pretty warm. A, a guy can make the argument that you might not need it, um, but it's so imperceivable in your pack that I bring it anyway. And sometimes at those high elevations, you can get a cool evening. So it's nice to be able to put it on when you're sitting around camp or when you're doing some evening glassing. Um, or if the weather does drop, you'll be happy to have it. Um, so that kind of helps fill this top part of this bag and leaves things accessible uh, and helps it pack nice. Then we're gonna get into some more kind of necessities, things that, that we'll be using, but not quite as frequently. Um, this stuff sack is full of snacks and things that I'll eat for lunch. So I got some bars in here um, some snacks, some powdered drinks, just a bunch of stuff that I'll probably use for lunch. I won't, you typically won't boil water and heat up a mountain house or anything for my lunch meals. I'll just kind of eat bars and snacks. Um, so I keep that on the right side here. So during the day I can get that pretty easily through the side pocket. I don't need to go through the top and take all this stuff out to get to it. I can unzip this side pocket, grab this bag, stuff it back in there pretty easily. Um, then you kind of get into some more of our camp stuff. Jet boil, pretty straightforward. Um, I, I typically am only using that when we're setting up camp at night. So that's, I don't really worry about where that is accessibly. I'm going to be dumping my whole pack at night to set up camp and that'll come out in the process. I guess another thing to note is we plan on this hunt to be rolling up camp every morning and hunting with uh, camp on our backs. So a couple considerations come into mind when packing your bag for that. Um, one, obviously trying to keep things light. There's only so much you could do there, but where you pack your stuff and how you use it. So uh, every night we'll be camping in a different spot in theory, dropping camp, dropping all this, setting it up, and then every morning rolling it back up again. Um, 
Here's my air pad. It's a Nemo. I don't know the brand. I've had it forever, but it's your typical blow up sleeping pad. Works pretty well for me. I've had it for years. Hasn't let me down yet. Uh, this is one more swing out pocket. I write kill kit on this one. This is everything I need if we need to quarter an animal um, and pack something out. So again, you're not getting to this one super frequently, but you want to have all this stuff separate and easy to find when you get to that point. I also keep my tag in here. Um, I find that to be a convenient spot to keep it as a reminder. So oftentimes you're pretty pumped. You killed something, you quarter it all up, you get it all loaded in your pack, then you realize, oh shit, I got to notch my tag. As soon as you dig in there, you'll find your tag in there and get started on that. That one just floats in my bag anywhere because I can find it. We got plenty of time at that point in time. Um, let me loosen up some of these straps so we can get to the rest of the gear in here. Oh, well, you can see you got a tripod here. So I got my spotting scope and my tripod in the side. Try to get it off. So I run my spotting scope and my tripod on the same side um, for easy access. And that is one of the nice things again about the Sky Archer has the built-in spotting scope pocket. Um, and it's a differential cut, so you can see it kind of comes out on its own. So even when this bag is full and compressed, you can still slide spotting scope in and out easily, um, which is super convenient. This is a Sky Air. Uh, that'll be my tent setup. So the Sky Air tarp and the Sky Air mesh insert will be what I'll be using on this hunt. It's perfect for this style of hunting where you're carrying your camp on your back because it's so light. Um, I think as this sits, this weighs a little less than a pound and a half. And you have to picture the trekking poles. Um, you can see I had one trekking pole I plan to hike in with and I have one other trekking pole that I keep in here uh, for pitching the tent and then a heavy pack out, I'll use both of them. This stuff sack just has my extra clothes. I don't really plan on bringing much for extra clothes on a hunt like this. I got one extra shirt, one extra pair of underwear, and one extra pair of socks. Um, it affords you the ability to, what I typically will do is, is run the first setup for half the hunt, however long it is, four or five days, and then be able to change into fresh, uh, good feeling clothes for the last four or five. But it also allows you the ability, if you've got time to kill, you hit a fresh lake or stream, you can wring out some old sweaty clothes, dry them out, and, and switch in. So I'm pretty typically just like to run one extra setup. And I don't bring extra pants or anything. I just wear the same pants the whole time. Um, this is the last little organization bag that I have in here. This would be all my camp stuff. You can see it says camp on there. That's things that I want to bring into the tent with me at night. Um, that way I can kind of just have what I need. The rest of this stuff can stay wherever I get back, put in my backpack, but that's got headlamp. It's got stuff to charge my electronics, my GPS and my phone, um, things like that. So extra batteries, just kind of all the stuff that I might need when I'm sitting in camp, preparing myself for the next day and, um, and sleeping. And then the last couple things I have in here, oh, here's the rain pants. I am bringing a pair of rain pants. You can see I got them rolled up and I leave them down a little bit farther because it's going to be a nasty weather situation where I have time to get them and stuff if, if it starts raining that hard. I don't anticipate pulling them out every, in and out every day, but you never know. So I got them just in case. And then this is our Chill Coot 15 degree sleeping bag. Um, pretty straightforward. Works great for this type of a hunt. And the last thing in here is my food. So I use this big stuff sack and I think I have eight dinner mountain houses in here and three breakfast ones. So I'm not a big breakfast guy, but some mornings, mid morning, I'll, if we're bored or a glass and I'll, I'll boil up a breakfast one. So quite a few freeze dried meals in there. Um, and then here's the other trekking pole that I mentioned. Um, that's important for setting up the sky air. And the only other thing that's kind of unique that I do that you got to have that um, not everybody in our office does this. I find it works really well for me, but I pack and hike on trips like this with all my game bags and my uh, load cell dry bags in the load shelf. So you can kind of see them back here. I mean, they packed in really small. I have two load cells and two cotton regular old game bags. Uh, I like to just fold them up neatly, put them in the load shelf. Uh, theory kind of behind that is you're not going to need them until you're accessing the load shelf and you're quartering up an animal. 
Um, so they're there when you need them, but you don't have to worry about stuff them in your backpack with all this stuff, taking them out every night when you drop camp. They're just kind of out of the way in that spot. So I've been doing that for quite a few years and it works really well. Um, besides that, that's kind of the whole gear list outside of water, which I'll just be filling up the Nalgene and the, the three liter bladder and be ready to rock and roll.